My first car, my first apartment, stories from my life. Hello y'all, I'm Diana Brienne. Well, I have done this story and many of my stories before. And about two years ago, when it first came public on my channel, I started coming out with stories from my life. Some of them were very lighthearted and fun, and some of them had a more serious tone to them. And so I was sharing all kinds of stories. And I don't know what you would look for if you went back through my videos, but it probably says stories from my life in somewhere in the title or in the description box. And because there was quite a few. Well, this one happens to be when I was about 17. I graduated early from high school and I got in my big red Chevy Impala. It was a 1965 Chevy Impala that my mama had bought in the farm field, uh, in, a, in a farm field for $75. My stepfather spent about four months getting it up and running. It roared through town and uh, it made a lot of noise, but it ran pretty well after my stepfather had refurbished it or remodeled it or did whatever he did to it, we fixed it and got it up and running. So I decided I was gonna to move to the big city and the big city really wasn't a big city. It was another small Southern town, but it was bigger than our, our Southern town because our Southern town was a really small area. And uh, the other town was a bit bigger and it was about two hours away and so I got in my car in my polyester with my polyester blouse and my and my um, plastic purse and my sandals and my jeans and away I went roaring down the road in my red Chevy Impala. Two hours of a drive all excited about starting a new life. And so we had family friends in this small, in this bigger town area. What was actually, they lived in a small town next to the town that was bigger. And so I went there and I stayed with them for about two weeks. And I ended up getting a job as a prep girl in the back. A prep girl who prepared potatoes and, and um, did all, you know, prepared the foods to go to the waitresses and waiters or to the cooks. And that's what I did. That was really my first job, along with being the head hostess at a pizzeria. And the pizzeria came about maybe two or three weeks after I'd started the first job. And so I had these two jobs going back and forth. Um, and I was all excited. I was 17 years old and the head hostess of a pizzeria. <laughs> And that was back where, when platform shoes were the rage and, and uh, platform shoes and uh, mini skirts and hot pants. And well, hot pants was a little bit outdated by then, but nonetheless, I was a little bit outdated anyhow, and I didn't mind. <laughs> and so I rented this apartment and it was in a big old, what we call haunted house. And it was like a big old mansion that was kind of falling down a little bit. And it was turned into efficiency apartments. And there were probably about 15 efficiency apartments in this big old mansion house, haunted house. And most of the ladies were old ladies or ladies of questionable values. <laughs> And I was neither. I wasn't a lady of questionable value and I wasn't an old lady. I was 17 years old, but I told everybody I was 18 because you really had to be 18 to get moved in anywhere and you had to be 18 to even get a job um, that was, you know, was around any kind of, you know, I guess beer or anything like that. So I just simply told everybody I was 18, got my job and I moved into this apartment and um, we shared a bathroom. I shared a bathroom with two old ladies and uh, I, but I had my own place. I had like a little cooking stove and a little refrigerator and the bed was, it would sink down in. It would sink down in and it had springs that came up through it. So I ended up sleeping on the floor with an electric blanket most of the time. And so I lived there for about maybe five months, six months. And I was just so happy and so excited because, well, I was now, you know, the head, head uh, hostess at the pizzeria, my big career at 17 years old. And so in the meantime, um, you know, I was considered to be very pretty at that time. And so, but I was also very naive, very vulnerable, very naive because I hadn't really been 
you know, out there in the world. And so a lot of, I got a lot of male attention, a lot of men's attention. So at one point I began to get followed and I didn't have a clue who it was. And when I was gone to work, there was, um, the old ladies would, would come back and tell me. And so would the ladies with questionable values, they would tell me that someone came to the main door, which they would ring the doorbell and someone would go to the door because it had a main entrance. And they would ask for me, they'd say, is Diane home? And they'd say, no, she's at work. Well, they always knew that I was w at work. So why were they coming to the door? We have no idea. But they would go across the street in a trench coat and a hat and stand under there and, and I think smoke a cigarette. And they would wait. But they would say, well, she'll be home tomorrow. But he would never come. He would never come. And they were all telling the same story. So I believe that they were all telling the truth. Could this have been an angel? Some people seem to think, and I think maybe it could have been an angel to kind of make me alert to things that were going on that I needed to really get out of there after five or six months because the ladies of questionable value were dragging men that they didn't know in in the middle of the night, even though um, they weren't supposed to. And they would kind of look over at me and kind of eye me a lot and I would kind of look away. You know, I didn't want to make that connection with them. And I was still very, very shy and very kind of awkward in a way, I guess is the right word. And I really wasn't into the dating scene at that point. But I had several other guys that were pursuing me. So we had no clue who this was that was coming there and also who was following me home because I would have like the dishwasher or the busboy or the cook, someone always bringing me home, but sometimes we'd get followed. And so it just didn't all add up to me. And so it scared me and I told my mother. And so when I told my mother, she decided she got in her big brand new white Pontiac and she drove down there and threw my suitcases and loaded up her car and away we went back home. And so I, because by then I had sent my red Chevy Impala back up home. So I, maybe two or three weeks after I had actually moved down there. So I didn't have my car with me. So lo and behold, shortly thereafter, um, I ended up getting enrolled in college and I stayed at that college for a little bit and then we left for California. Our big move to California, which was a whole nother beginning to a whole nother journey and a whole nother part of my life. And so we left our little small southern town. I went to college for a few months and in the beginning there at this major university and then I went out to California. And that is like a whole story that I'll have to share with y'all in the future again. Okay, so stories from my life, my first apartment, my first car, and I guess you would call it the angel in the trench coat from my house to yours. May God bless you. I hope you like, share, subscribe, and I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.